Yeah. That is not consistent with my understanding of okay. God. Yeah. God doesn't choose. Yeah. He doesn't make this one bad and this one good because they read a book and follow these rules. I can't I can't buy that. If God all loving, <laughs> yes. if God is all loving, even one of us that ignored his message, how how could he not forgive us? Was that the first time that you did that? Yeah. Oh, I see. It's not the first time I've ever prayed, but it's the first time I've ever prayed to ah. Allah in that way. These guys were praying, and, yeah. and he said, do you want to pray with them? I see. So I said, sure. <laughs> and it was lovely. I really felt touched today. It was like a special moment. By the way, my name is Fridos. Yes, you Fridos. Fridos. My name is Alf. Alf. Like Alif, but without the I. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> great, great. Seriously, I'm touched. I'm touched with your, with, with your movement, with your actions, that it's quite spontaneous that you go there and you make yeah. the prayer. I never planned to come and pray today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was not on my agenda, but yes. I just, today I feel very open in my heart yes. and just feel like connecting. Oh, it's, it's and so Islam come, came to me today. Yeah, yes. uh, when I was eating earlier, two young Islam girls from the University of Islam yes. came, yes. Ah, interviewed yes. me, yeah. they gave me a Quran. Yeah. And it was a really nice exchange. Yeah. And I just felt touched by that and open. Yeah. And so I'm walking around feeling open. Yeah. And then your colleague exactly. reached to me. And so Do, don't you think that is the faith? That is what God, Allah, make you here today that the two girls come and talk to you and then my colleague talk to you sure. and now we have you, you, you have your the, first experience there's no coincidence there's no coincidence and this I've this. never walked on this street before in my life mm. I was going that way and I thought no I'm gonna go this way <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I decided to go this way but because, Allah led me yes because the owner of the heart guides you to be here now do, don't you think that this might be the sign that God wants you to know more about Islam and initially and become a Muslim. What, what, what do you think about that? Al? I think that God wants me to understand every religion. Yeah. But I don't think He wants me to embrace any of them. Okay. Cool. No problem. Do you have anything that you would like to know or you dislike about Islam that you've heard? Yeah, I have a little thing that troubled me this morning. Yeah. When I was reading the Quran after these two girls left me a book. Yeah. And it, it had a... I only got as maybe 10 pages or so. But yeah, yeah. It was an exclusive. Yep. It, it was suggesting that there are the chosen ones, yep. and there are those that, that were not here, yep. and, and, and they can't be saved. Yep. That is not consistent with my understanding of okay. God. Yep. God doesn't choose. Yep. He doesn't make this one bad and this one good because they read a book and follow these rules. I can't, I can't buy that. Yep. But every religion I've ever come across says the same thing. Yep. We are the one and only religion. All the others are inferior, follow this way. And, and that's why I'm not a religious man. Okay. I'm a spiritual man. If you okay. follow God and your heart is open and you love and you're happy, yeah. what, what does the title matter? What does the skin color matter? Whether the hat, not a hat, yeah. prayer mat, no prayer mat. The Quran says skin doesn't matter. Yeah. What matters is in your heart. Yeah. What you believe in, how you practice your life, yeah. how you live your life. Yeah. According to the law, that God has already stipulated. He doesn't need us, but like you say, I very agree with you because God says that He doesn't choose people. He doesn't say that, okay, because you doesn't submit to me, therefore I don't give you love. No, God still loves. It's unconditional. Put it this way, He never He never gives us a single bill to charge us for the eyesight that we are enjoying, <laughs> for the ability that to breathe. No, he no. don't charge us. No, no. Either you are a believer or not a believer, He don't charge you. Sure. Just put it as a very simple term that one day we just wake up and we found ourselves in a hospital and the doctor told us someone sent you here because you met an accident you almost died now as a human how do we feel during that time we want to look for the person who sent us there right to show our gratitude to them to thank them same thing you are a spiritual man now all these things eyesight how much are you willing to sell to somebody so just one eyeball? No, it's not for sale. It's not for sale. Even though people offering you 2 billion, 10 billion, you're not going to sell it. Now, how should we thank him? Worship. Worship now. Honor. 
Yes. Honest, respect. sincerity, respect, and follow what he commanded us. He don't need us, but he said, just do something very simple. Just for example, we just cannot go to work, supposing 9 to 5, and tell our boss, okay, we come to work around 11, and we go back at 2 o'clock. And then we say, <laughs> I, 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 I done my best, man. This is good. I mean, if you are the boss, can you accept that? Course, you won't be able to accept that. Not accept. If you want to work, you work according to my way. Cool? Okay. That's fair. Now, same things. God is saying, now, you want to be good, I want you to be good. But you don't do the good that you think is good for yourself. Because human could not ponder, could not think about the things that is really good for them. We have a limited knowledge. Just like, just now, I, I, I talked to someone, and, they told, and, and the guy told me that, you know, as long as I don't kill, I don't lie, I don't steal, that's fine. I'm doing good things. I'm asking, how about smoking? Is smoking good? For people who smoke, it's good. Do you smoke? Uh, no. No. For people who smoke, it's good. But for us who don't smoke, is it good? Yeah. It's not good. And it can't be good. It can't, it can't be consistent with God's will. Yes. That, that you would now, damage this body now, intentionally. Now, then, whose right should we infringe now? Whose good should we follow? Your good, the smoker's good, or my good? Or everyone, we say, oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, well, everyone takes their own good. Yeah. Which means, both of us, we cannot come to a conclusion unless we follow the good that God says what is good. And God says, your body have a right upon you, protect your body. So don't smoke. Because in the in, in the saying of the prophet, the prophet say, la dira wa la dira, which means, do not harm yourself and harm others. This is why we say, we cannot come with the conclusions that what is really good unless the ones that we believe know what is good. The creator who know what is good for us. This is like why we say, just we want to do good. Now, God say, you can do good. Continue to do good, but do the right way. Good and right must be consistent. According to the Quran, what happens when you die? Okay, what happens when we die? That, of course, we will, we will be buried. <laughs> but but where, where will your soul go? Okay, our soul will be going to a place that is what we call as Barzakh. Barzakh. Barzakh is a, is a means that a thick wall that separates between that world and our world. That they will never come back until the moment of the day of judgment. And then everyone will yes, come back and be judged. The soul will be put back into the body and we will be judged accordingly. And that is why in Islam, the articles of faith number five is to believe in the hereafter. Because I believe that you will agree with me that the justice will not be fully served in this world. Okay, but this is where I have a small issue. No problem. Could an all-loving being, could he punish any one of us even? Even one of us could he punish us and banish us to not be by his side because in our humanity we made mistakes and we did not understand his greatness. Now, could he hold that against us for all eternity? Exactly. I can't believe that the all-knowing, all-powerful, all-loving God would do that to even one of us. Before I answer the question, if you look back into the Quran, in Surah Isra chapter 17 verse 15, Allah says that he will not punish a nation until he has sent a messenger to them. Now, how sure we are that those people who die as a disbeliever, he, God will punish him. The, the clear message being conveyed to them first. That's the first thing. We're not sure. But you still think? I mean, you, it seems that what the Quran is saying yes. is that I bring a message, I send uh, Muhammad, peace be upon him, yes. he's a prophet, yes. he brings the news. Yes. If you don't listen, you're in trouble. Yeah, really? Yeah, because uh, you I see, struggle. Because where, where, where is the un, where is God's compassion? Yes, God is all mercy, all loving, all compassion. But God is all all just. We cannot just take God is loving and mercy, but rejecting His attribute of justice. There must be a justice being served. We, we are not trying to compare God and human because yeah. God mercy and our mercy is totally different. Yeah. Yeah. Now, we just put it this way that, can you imagine that a boss, he don't want to fire anyone. No, no employee want to fire anyone. Yeah. But if continuously, the staff give, keep on giving excuse, excuse. Yeah, yeah. I mean, no, I'm all loving, man. <laughs> I need to keep this guy. I mean, can you imagine he has five kids? And he has five kids and two parents I've who are old that. age. I've kept them for way too long. Yeah, we, <laughs> yes. And then, end of the day, what do you do? It hurts the business. Eventually, one day, I just, you have to look after everyone else. Now. For imagine, 
God gives us 50, 60 years to ponder. Now, I'm just telling you very simple. I, I, I mean, just see, I, I did this way. Yeah, just look it this way. 50, 60 years to keep on pondering. I keep on sending people to talk to you. Just submit to me. You didn't even have to become Muslim. Submit to me. Do the things that I ask you to do. Okay, for all your purpose in life, you just worship the only one God. Very easy way, just like what you have done just now. It's very easy. Yeah. And God just say, this is the only thing that I ask you to do. You can continue to do good things, but worship me alone without any partner. Because end of the day, if you worship other people, they are not the one who give you your eyesight. They are not the one who give you the ability. Why you thank the wrong person? So I understand in the Quran yes. that you, you do acknowledge Jesus Christ and any of the prophets that yes. came before yep. uh, Muhammad. Yes. But when I was reading the Quran this morning, it was if, if I understood it right, and I think maybe I have to read it many times yes. before I really understand what I'm reading. But it seems to be saying there is only one way. So, but if you know there was Jesus Christ and it's in your writings and he is also a prophet yep. and he too is sharing a message. Does that make all of the Christians yeah, yeah, correct. wrong? This is a very good question. And because you see, what I say is not important. Because Islam is not about what I say. Islam is about what the book says. We're talking about evidence here. In chapter number 5, verse number 48. I mean, it's easier that we talk about using the Quran itself. Where God says, okay, to you we send the scripture in truth, confirming the scriptures that came before it. Yeah. These scriptures is to confirm the scripture before okay, it. Okay, so to confirm what is true. So the Holy Bible or the the yeah. the, uh, the Old Testament. Yeah. Scripture there. To confirm is, what is, is true. true. Okay. Anything that is not mentioned or contradicting with the Quran, as according to the Islamic belief, yeah. is being amended by the hand of the human. Yeah. I mean. Uh, maybe you, the, you know that I know the Bible has been revised with many many times yeah so you know about that now and guarding it in safety so judge between them what Allah has revealed and follow not their desire to each among you have we prescribe a law and an open way now if you look into the Bible in chapter in Matthew Jesus says that I was not sent except to the Lordship of Israel which means he's only sent to a group of nations this is what we believe yeah this is what the Quran says as well then now, Prophet Muhammad has been sent as the last prophet and he's special. He has been sent not only to a special nation, to only one nation, <coughs> but he has been sent as a mercy to the universe, to everyone. That's why we say the Quran is a universal message to everyone. i just give you an example, an analogy. Why we only say Islam? Because all the prophets before this, their religion is also Islam. Islam means submitting our will to the will of God. Is it submitting, right? This is direct translation of Islam. Yes. Submitting your will to the will of God. Now put it this way. In John, chapter number 5, verse number 30, Jesus said, I do not do what I will, but I do the will of God who has sent me. Now, which means, he's submitting himself to God. He's a Muslim. In the Quran, all the prophets before this, they carry the same message, which is to ask people to come and worship the only one God. In the Bible, God says, Thou should not worship other God than me or any graven image, for I am the jealousy God. Consistent with the Quran, where God says, Surah Anissa, chapter 448, and verse 116, God says, I will forgive all your sins, any sins, but do not worship other God than me. Consistent with that, okay? which means it's an Islam. Now, the analogy that I want to put to you is that now in Malaysia, we have a law, a new law, that where this passenger behind, they need to put on their seatbelt. Yeah. If you are not putting that, you will find 300 bucks flying away. Same in Australia. <laughs> Same. <laughs> okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. <laughs> now, you are being stopped by the police. And because you don't put the seatbelt, and the police say, okay, now I'm going to issue the summons, 300 bucks. And he said, hey, I'm following the previous parliament law. Why are you are charging me? I'm following the previous law. What the police will tell you? The new law. Well, well done. Very good analogy. And very well delivered. <laughs> I get the point. Yes. You've made your point very yeah. well. Yeah. So this is what I mean that God said, follow the last and the final testament because in the previous scriptures, God never says that he will promise this scripture to be protected. Because he knew, with his all-knowing, he knew that people will go and corrupt the book. But in this book, chapter 15, verse number 9, God said, We have, without doubt, sent down the message and we will assuredly guide it from corruption. <coughs> Which means, this book is being protected. And who is the one who gives guarantee? God himself. Who 
to give guarantee that he will protect it from corruption. But it has been corrupted, hasn't it? No, the Quran no. The book has not, but the meaning has been. You can't. You know why? You read, you read the banners over there? Uh, can you help me to turn this around? This is the book. Salika Kitab Ula Roy Bob. They will change, they will alter. Millions yeah. read it, yeah. millions memorize it. The moment someone tried to change it, no. Because people remember. Yes. I understand. I do understand. I'm not, I'm yes. not questioning or challenging yeah. the authority of the book. Yes. Like in every religion, it seems to me that there are always extremists who interpret scripture to their own ends yeah. and, and use it for purposes that wouldn't yeah. be in harmony with God's law. Yeah. In 2011, I attended a talk by an American who is it here and he says according to statistics okay five percent of the populations of muslim is radical muslim radical radical five percent according to research that's a lot a lot <laughs> i mean i couldn't even found 1.5 percent yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we believe that it's a lesser numbers yeah must be now how about the 95 percent they are not radical and the talk is focusing on what we're focusing on our religions being hijacked by the extremists. Which means, how can the 5% of radical, if so-called, proven that this, there is 5% of Muslim who are radical, represent the 95% of them? Because the media mafia promote their story. Exactly, brilliant. 95% is peace-loving Muslim who might be your neighbors. I'm the one who's talking to you. He's the one who's interviewing you now. Yeah, yeah. And you're walking around all the terrorists now? Red radical? No? Oh, I'm feeling really scared. <laughs> <laughs> you have people who are bound to misinterpret for their own purpose. Yeah. But are we going just because of the minimal or minority who make it their own interpretations and make Islam look bad, therefore you reject the entire message? It's not fair. That's no, not. It's not fair. You're very good at your work. It's coming from the heart, and you've really studied this so well, I can tell. It's really so nice, a nice exchange. Because I, I embrace the religion. Of, I'm not a born Muslim. I'm a Chinese. I'm not a Malay. I'm born in a Buddhist family. And you switched, switched faiths. Sometimes people ask me, why do you convert from Buddhism to Islam? I say, I become a better Buddhist now. Because Beautiful. Buddhism teach me good things. Yeah. Beautiful teaching. How to treat my parents well teach other well but I have my problem which is I believe in God but Buddhism doesn't believe in God and that's my problem <coughs> no yeah Buddhism doesn't believe in God really yeah I study Buddhism well that's so that surprised me yes and if you ask people who are Buddhist they will tell you they believe in God but in fact the scriptures doesn't mention anything about God and if you ask the scholar they will say there's no such thing as God and for them God is not important and that is my problem with, I, I, it's my own problem, it's not their problem, it's yeah. my problem. Yeah. I mean, I have God. Now, I want to know who is my God. Who is your God? Yeah, who is my God? What can qualify to become God first? I cannot say this is God, that is God. We must have the criteria of God. I'm, I'm, I'm going through the, the process myself. See, I've, got, I've probably got a few criteria by which I measure God. Yeah, come, okay. share with me. It's so, interesting. Is God omniscient? Yeah. All knowing? Yeah. Is he omnipresent everywhere all with time. his knowledge okay if he's everywhere there can be nowhere that he isn't so he must be in you <coughs> and he must be in me and you and you and all of the people around us he must be there can't be one tiny little speck of the universe where god is not present yeah with his knowledge he's present everywhere i i narrate to you a story that i heard maybe it's very very useful your stories are good, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, good. Thank you for the compliment. Now, one day, some guys, one guy is asking. He sees a lot of calamity, trouble in his community. And he starts to ask, Oh God, if you exist, why don't you come down and do something about this? He complained to God. In the middle of the night, he had a dream. And God told him, I have done something. And he starts to question God, What have you done? You see? The people around me? God says, Doesn't I have sent you to be with them to do something? Same thing. God is, His knowledge is area with us. Mm -hmm. For instance, He's sending me here today and He's making you come here today yeah. so we can know each other and communicate yeah. to know better. Totally. Yes. 
God, He just won't leave us alone. With His knowledge, He always sends His people. As what we call in Islam, the soldier of Allah. He, they are everywhere. But you do not know who are they. There is no such thing as soldier of Allah. No. I understand. Sometimes the soldier of Allah has one leg and a cup. Mm. They might be the one that Allah sent <coughs> for us to have the opportunity to do charity. We thought that you know we are helping them. Yes, we are helping them in this world. But don't forget the charity that we gave to them. They are helping us for our hereafter. Those are the things that have been counted. God says in Surah chapter number ten, verse ninety-nine. He said, "If he wants, he can create all mankind in one religion." Mm. But he don't. He gives you free will to choose. Yeah. Because in the end, you will be accountable for your choice that you made. You are giving free choice. But make sure the choice that you made, you will be accountable for it. But he said, he don't leave you here. He said, I give you the Quran. Read it. But that book has not reached every person. That's why. That's why. Some people live and die with never even knowing that book existed. Exactly. Yes. What happens to them? That's why I say, this is good. Chapter number seventeen. What's number? You know it inside out, don't you? Huh? You've, you're one of the millions that have memorized it. Uh, no, no, exactly. <laughs> Chapter number seventeen. Yeah. What's number fifteen? Yeah. Who receive guidance, receive it for his own benefit. Who get astray the soul to his own loss. No bearer of burdens can bear the burdens of another. Which means in Islam we don't believe in inherited original sin. You responsible for your own actions. Yeah. Okay. Now, God say, nor will we visit with our wrath until we have sent a messenger to give warning. Which means these people who die, knowing the message, God is all just. How can you punish someone who has never listened about the message? I tell you another one. I give you a lot of evidence. So, but, but, but on that, on, let's stay on that one for a minute. Yes, yes. Okay. There are many sheep on the planet, yep. disguised as human beings. Yep. Okay, and they are bombarded with very, very powerful messages. Yep. Buy this. Look like this. Do that. Watch this. Go here. The, the power of those messages is so strong, and the power of their minds is not so strong. Yep. Are they failing? Because they can't break through all of the powerful media messages and find the word of God, will they be punished for that? Because they weren't intelligent enough or powerful enough to overcome the media. Because the media is a powerful machine. Yes, that's why. That's that is a, your question. I think you can read my mind. You re, you learn something about that? <laughs> well, I think God, you can read my mind. Be connected. Yes, God <laughs> connects you different way. That's the word that I want to show you. Okay. It's exactly pertaining to your question. It's either I read your mind or you read my mind. <laughs> Something going on. <laughs> Now, chapter number four, yeah. verse 115. Yeah. If anyone contends with the messenger, even after the guidance has been plainly, con- plainly conveyed to them, which means a plain message, which means as it is not the one that's been distorted by the media, that you know. Islam is like this. Oh no, I'm not going to accept Islam is like this. No, if I I'm listening to the media, trust me, I'm not going to become a Muslim. No, <laughs> I'm not, no, I'm not no, going to become. What's going to happen? I'm not going to become But Muslim. Man. Is God all loving? <laughs> yes, all loving, all loving. If God is all loving, how can he even that one, even one of us that ignored his message, how how could he not? Forgive us. That's why God I just can't imagine it. hell. What is hell? Is hell where you burn forever? I mean, <coughs> I don't know what hell is, but it doesn't. It's not consistent with an all-loving God that there could be anywhere to send people that <coughs> don't worship Him. That's why I mentioned earlier part that when we accepting the all-loving God, we also need we need to accept all His attributes. That He's all-loving. He is so all mercy. He is so all just. Now, how should we balance that between justice and also loving? You you cannot say because I'm all loving just because you kill him. I, I think it's okay. I mean, I will still put you in heaven. I mean, can you imagine lecturer in 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 the class? Everyone doing the same exam. Some pass, some fail. Then I will pass all of you. <laughs> then the the, the the student who are very hard working, he will say. Then what is the purpose? I'm staying late to do all the revisions, to do all my assignment, all my thesis, and then after that you're going to pass everyone. We have the concept of reward and punishment. If uh, you are the boss, I believe, because you say you fire someone. <laughs> <laughs> Now, in your organization, for sure, you will reward, you will give bonus to those who are performing well. Those who don't perform well, you might don't, you might give them lesser, or you don't give them. You might not deduct their salary as a good boss. Same thing, reward and punishment. 
That's why when we say all loving God, we just cannot say this is all loving. But in the end, we neglect, we reject the attribute of justice. But doesn't isn't he teaching in the Quran? I don't know where. I bet you know exactly the page. <laughs> but he must be teaching forgiveness. Yes, he teaches forgiveness must. everywhere. In there, show me the place of forgiveness, please. Now, forgiveness. Lord. I give you. I give you two. <laughs> He's okay. an expert. Don't worry. <laughs> I know he is. So I know I can ask the questions, and he will show me the page. Thirty-nine fifty-three. Say, O oh my servants who have transgressed against their soul, you are not transgressing against Allah. We are transgressing ourselves. We wrong ourselves. Yeah. Despair is not of the mercy of Allah. For Allah forgives all sins. For He is of forgiving most merciful. Now, He says, You have transgressed yourself. You wrong yourself and say, God say, You just repent, I will forgive you. Did He put any condition? No. But don't continue to do bad all your life because you do not know when is the last time you'll be able to repent it's true yeah God is all forgiving but that doesn't mean that you keep on doing bad things you know no now this one was right and the marvelous part marvelous part chapter 25 verse 70 just now he said he forgive you right it's just it's just an analogy of you are borrowing me one million but just because I say ah uh, I don't have the money to pay you and you're telling me Okay, no worry, Fridos. Since you are telling me very sincerely, and I trust you, you don't have to pay me one million. That is good already. Now, but what God says in this verse: Unless he repent, believe, and work righteous deeds, for Allah will change the evil of such person into good, and Allah is all forgiving, most merciful. I give you the same analogy just now. The fifth, chapter thirty nine fifty three. Instead, you don't have to pay me one million. On top of that, I'm going to give you another million. How about that? Good deal. Yeah. Now, could be better. Yes, yeah. God is saying. Can you imagine if we have been sinning for all our life? But of course, I don't ask you to sin for all your life <laughs> to repent. No, we have been sinning for all our life, and God said, the moment you repent, He will forgive. But the next moment you do one good deed, any good deeds, God said, all your previous sins, God will turn it into good deeds. Good deeds. I give you another one. God truly wants us to go to heaven. He don't want to punish anyone. This is what God says, not what I say. Because what I say is not really important. Chapter number 10, verse 25. Allah does call to the home of peace, which means in Darussalam, the heaven. God call people to the home of peace, to whom He pleased. What He pleased is that He pleased with everyone, but are you pleased that you want to follow Him to the straight path? He's showing you. Now, uh, this way straight to Sungai Wang. Don't go other way. But I don't believe this Malaysian. I know better. I'm from other country. I know better this way. <laughs> now, he's the creator. He's telling you. Now, uh, I'm, I'm just put you here temporarily in this world. I'm going to show you the way back to your home. Jana. Okay? Don't follow other path. Just follow this path. Yeah. But he said, no way, man. I know better. Can you imagine? This is supposed to be a straight path, easy path to just go to help Sungai Wang. No, no, no. I think I'm going to take the monorail. I'm going to Pataling Street. I'm going to KLCC. Then I will find my way. You think you will come back to Sungai Wang? Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> no. What do you say? He want you to go to home. Go home. He calling us, go home. But easy, follow the street path. You don't have to be a Muslim, but just submit to him. But by initially by submitting to him, automatically people will call you as Muslim. Okay. This is what God says, not what I say. Does it make sense to you? It all makes sense. No, nothing you have said doesn't make sense. It's all very, very clear. You uh, express yourself uh, in a really um, very pleasant but very clear way. And you use good analogies. You tell a nice story. You're very engaging, fun guy to, to share this stuff with. Um, and I believe you are delivering a message from God with through with all your integrity. Alhamdulillah. Okay, I believe that. That's no doubt in my mind. God sends his messages to me all the time. Exactly. Now, I mean, it's always the multi-million dollars questions that I always ask. Any things that you still dislike about Islam that stop you from becoming a Muslim? I mean, from stop you from submitting to God? It's this area, man, which I have with many of the religions, with the Catholic religion and Jewish religion, this idea of, of hell. I, it, God is love to me, all loving, yeah. all forgiving. Yeah. Even our worst sins, He will forgive. Yeah. And I believe without a request on our part. Yeah. I don't think we have to make, maybe I'm wrong, and I hope not to pay that price in a very hot place one day. 
Yeah, but um, I think there's many ways to submit to God's will. As I, as I mentioned to you, God says, this is his way. I hear that. Yeah. I hear that, that yeah. your understanding is, Thank you. God is saying, straight road. Not that way, not that way, not this way, that way, and only that way. That's yeah. what you're saying, isn't it? This yes. is what you're saying. Yes, yes. This says. Yes. And this is the word of God. Yes. So, therefore, there's no... When I say what I'm saying, it's, it's hard. It feels like it's very difficult for you because you know this is the only way there's only one path to God it's a straight road yeah. no deviation I, I, I've been trained because I'm embracing the religion I'm not born into the religion yeah. I'm making the choice yeah. by studying different religions yeah. I mean throughout the conversations you never heard that I'm trying to criticize other religions no, no I didn't hear that no. I don't do so why? because all religions teach good but I want to find the one that is right for yeah. me yeah. the one that is the truth yeah. because we are not only looking for good doing good itself is not enough we need to do the good the right way you want to help someone who have heart attack so since you want to do good you go and take a knife <coughs> and then you just open his chest good Good. Probably not. <laughs> good, but not the right way. Yeah. The same thing. So for me, I want to do good with the right way by submitting my will to God. I don't want to call myself as Muslim, but eventually people call me as Muslim. Because Muslim mean the one who submit to the will to the God. Just like what Abraham was being called. Chapter number 3, verse 67. He's a Muslim. Jesus is a Muslim. Just because of this one small concept, I mean the, the one trouble that you have, and you can accept most of the things in Islam, which I believe. So I can pretty much accept it all, yes. except for that, 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 that God could punish okay, no. any one of us for a lifetime here is what? If we're lucky, a hundred years. How long is eternity? It's not lucky, man. If a hundred years, you're, you're, I mean, you cannot move. It's not lucky. Okay. But really, how long is eternity? Yeah. So 100 years here, maybe 80, 70, 60 for most yeah. people, versus eternity of hell. <coughs> Good. Okay. You want to listen to another analogy? Yeah, go on. <laughs> <laughs> I share with you. Do you know in Malaysia, we have one cap- we have uh, capital punishment. You do? Yeah. Okay. Capital punishment hang to death yeah. for the offense of drug trafficking. <coughs> for drug trafficking, okay. Those people who take drugs, right, they endure for how many seconds? Few seconds. Maybe they will endure for a few hours after that. Yeah. Can you imagine that they're trying to they, they buy, they bought the drugs and more than 0.05 gram, they will be hanged to death. So coincidentally they have 0.06, extra one, 0.01. Yeah. And the police caught them, arrest them. The judge, the court says, since you possess drugs of 0.06, the punishment is capital punishment. So the guy said, it's not fair, man. I'm just taking drugs. I'm just enjoying myself. I'm just getting myself high for a few hours and you hang me to die forever. Which means, it's not the things. It's not how long you enjoy. But it's a degree of the crime that counts. What? I mean, in Islam, there's only one crime that really the highest degree, which is the crime that you associate another partner to God. And that's the only crime. Just only this. I know you have a good heart because you care about others. Me too. I don't want people to go to hell for you. God, Islam, teach me to love. I'm loving people. That's why today we are organizing this to share with people the message of Islam in order for them to have a clear message about what Islam is all about for them to make their own choice because end of the day, I have my answer in front of Allah that God, I have done my best to convey the message and God will not blame me for that. Now you put me in a very difficult personal position. Why? Because now you've given me more time and more information about my questions around Islam than anybody has ever given me before. So now you put me in a very difficult position because I can't plead ignorance anymore. Yes. So you're saying I must. I must now. No, you, I understand yeah. you're not saying I must in, in, in embrace Islam. It, or I mustn't. I have to become a Muslim. Yeah. But I must embrace God and. And, and his one path yeah. or be damned <laughs> in the earlier conversation you say that I'm talking from my heart to your heart and this straight to your heart and I believe that you can feel that in my heart I'm praying that, that you will embrace and submit to the will of God you, you know that deep in my heart I'm praying that's I'm why praying you're that. spending so much time with me yes maybe some. you've saved one soul today yes and it's you and that man is you so 
I'm not trying to put you into a difficult situation and I'm not to, going to force you because in Islam it clearly says La ikraha fidin. There's no compulsions in religion. I could not force you to become Muslim. I can force you physically and verbally to say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah which means I bear witness there's no God except Allah and Muhammad is a messenger but deep in your heart you don't believe. You didn't say please pay for him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. So now I mean, I have to do my best. And that's why I keep on asking you anything that you still dislike that I could not answer you. I have another question. Okay, inshallah. The Christians say there's a second coming yeah. of Jesus Christ. Of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Do, does the Muslim accept that? Yes. So he is he going to come again? Yes. When is he going to come again? No one knows. Okay. And will Muhammad, peace be upon him, will he come again? No. Just Jesus will come again. Just Jesus come again. Thank you. He will be coming back again to clear the things about people is worshipping him. He's just coming again and he's going to tell them why do you worship him? That's why in the Bible it was mentioned. In the hour when I'm coming, people will come to me and say, Oh Lord, oh Lord, we have do miracles in your name. Then they say, I do not know you. Jesus said to them, I do not know you. Go away from me. Because Jesus will never ask people to worship him, as you know. That's why he come here. It's a God plan for him to come back again to clear that He's not God. He's not Son of God. That's why we believe in His second coming. A lot of things that Christians believe about Jesus, we believe. He healed the lepers, we believe. He raised from death. He, 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 I mean, He raised the death, we believe. We believe a lot of things. It's a lot of similarities. There's not, not much things that we disagree about Jesus. We love Jesus. Jesus is broken. We love Him, we broke him. <laughs> so, I mean, what, how about the invitations from me and from the team that for you, anything else that really stopped you today from making a decision, I mean to submit to the will of God. But just by declaring the testimony of faith, which is two sentences, just a short sentence itself. Of course, I will be very happy. I might, you might see me crying. I mean, yeah, yeah, I did not know you before this. Neither was you knowing me. But why should I cry when someone's saying the testimony of faith? I saw a lot of reversion. I go through that process. I know it's like, you have a parents and it's a, you never met them before since young. You grow up in the orphanage. And then when you grow up, you have the means, you go and search for them. And at last, after 40, 50 years, you meet them, what you will do? You will be crying. I thought you never know that. You never met them. But you were crying, why? Because it's emotional. For me, I will be doing the same thing. I might be crying. You are my brothers in humanity. The moment you recite the two sentences, you are my brother in faith. And I'm not going to grow a beard, okay? Sorry? I'll say the words, but I'm not growing a beard. <laughs> it's My up wife to you. doesn't like it. <laughs> no worry. No worry. So, I mean, so I can I can teach you sure. the recitation in Arabic. I, then I will, I will follow with the translation in English. Okay. Then that's it. Okay. This is very easy. Let's do that. Okay. Now. La ila. La ila. Ha illallah. Ha illallah. Muhammadu. Muhammadu. Rasulullah. Rasulullah. I bear witness. I bear witness. There is no God. There is no God. Worthy to be worshipped. Worthy to be worshipped. Except Allah. Except Allah. And Prophet Muhammad. And Prophet Muhammad. May peace and blessing be upon him. May peace and blessing be upon him. Is the last and final messenger of God. Is the last and final messenger of God. Allah. Allahu Akbar. Allah. Allah.